Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a floating flame. So first I'm going to be showing you my floating fire and then I'll be showing you how I actually pulled it off and then I'll explain the science behind how it's actually working. Okay, we're gonna start off with a lighter and I'm just gonna use all of my concentration so that when I extinguish the lighter, I can keep a tiny bit of flame in between my fingers. Let's see if I can do it. So how is this actually working? So in order to do this, what I did is just take this off of a lighter and I should recommend don't try this at home. And you can see right here at the tip where the gas comes out, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some pen ink on there. And you can even blow some down into it. So now you can see on the tip, the tip is covered with pen ink so that when I push the button to open it, you can hear a little pop and the gas starts coming out. Only this time, because there's pen ink on there and the pen ink is pretty viscous, it makes the hole that it's coming out of a little bit smaller. So it's shooting out even faster than it would normally. So normally when you light a lighter, you light it and the flame sticks right where the fuel's coming out. It doesn't go in and it doesn't lift off. The reason it doesn't go inside where the butane is is because there's no air in there and so the flame extinguishes right below the burner. And it can't go any higher because there's too much oxygen up there and so the flame also extinguishes. So right at the mouth of the lighter there's a perfect stoichiometric mixture of butane and oxygen. So that's where the flame sticks. But something interesting happens if you increase the speed of the butane coming out of the lighter. If you can increase the speed past a certain critical velocity, what happens is the flame actually starts to lift off from the mouth of the burner. Now this lift off happens for a few reasons. One of the reasons is just because basically you're blowing the flame. Just like when I blow on this flame, it moves the flame. So when you're turning up the velocity, it's blowing the flame upward so it lifts off and also it's entraining more air with it, and so there's not a good stoichiometric mixture below the flame. And so the higher you turn up the velocity, the further the flame moves up. And if you turn the velocity up too high, it'll extinguish the flame. Now normally lighters are designed so that there's not flame lift off, because those flames are easily extinguished and they're not very stable. But what you can do to increase the velocity even more than what's allowed in a normal lighter is you can actually put some pen ink right at the nozzle. And what that ink does is it flows down into the nozzle and coats it because the pen ink is pretty viscous and it makes that hole smaller. And when there's a smaller hole, that means that there has to be a higher velocity. And so basically by coating it with pen ink, you're increasing the velocity of the butane coming out of the lighter. And you increase it so much that it creates liftoff. So depending on how much ink you get in there, you can adjust the height of the flame coming out of it. And what's interesting is the relationship to the velocity of the butane coming out of there is actually just a linear relationship to the height of it. So the height of the flame coming off of the lighter is directly proportional to the velocity coming out of it. Increase the velocity by two, the height will increase by two. Now what's interesting about this is right where the flame burns, is right where it transitions from laminar flow to turbulent flow. You can actually see how cool this looks in the flame. You can see that it's almost perfectly laminar because you can see almost this bell-shaped curve, what laminar flow looks like in velocity terms. You can see that there's this bell-shaped curve almost in a perfect circle when you look at the bottom of the flame. And then above it, it's a little more turbulent. So it looks like the flame is settling right where it starts to turn from laminar to turbulent flow. 
Well, that was really cool. Thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you can know when my latest video comes out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.